Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, another little episode of Tyra Can Travel. Uh, I want to talk about my first offer and why I declined it. Oh my God, you guys, it's this whole game right now is so frustrating. If any of you are looking for a position, I'm sure you know, it's not easy out there right now. Or maybe it was for you. If it was, please let me know. How did you make it easy? What's your specialty? What are you looking for? What's, what, what part of the country or world are you going to that made it easy? Because a lot of us are struggling and having a tough time finding, securing, and not getting canceled from uh, contracts. I'm seeing a lot of that as well. Uh, we're going to talk about that in the end of this video too. I want to talk about um, cancellations and what we can do to form a united front against all these cancellations. So cheers to you all. I'm having my evening, uh, evening wine with you while we chat for just a few minutes. All right. So my declination, I did uh, decline a hospital in South Florida. I'll say no more. Uh, and I declined it for three reasons. And, and I think we have to be picky. We can't just jump at the first thing we see. And um, we have to make sure it's what we wanted. Now, there's a part B to this. I declined it first because, first, of, first and foremost, it's, it has over 350 beds. And that was one of the stipulations I had. I wanted to go to a smaller facility, and I asked my recruiter to make sure the hospitals were under 350 beds. Um, second of all, uh, it really wasn't paying uh, as much as we need it to work. You know, we're moving across the country. Um, we really need to, um, a certain number to make this work. And it just was about $800 off weekly from what we wanted. Uh, the third reason is, well, there's two more reasons. The third reason is because South Florida <laughs> real estate is very expensive. And the more we researched it, realized the stipend they were offering, um, I mean, the housing is just, uh, it's expensive there. So we would really have to work hard to find affordable housing or go with the agency housing. And fourth reason is my Spanish. Mi español es, es no muy bueno, es un poquito español. Donde es su dolor? Um, para cuantos días tú tienes dolor? Um, uh, mm -mm. Sí. My Spanish. My medical Spanish is not what it used to be. And this area of Florida, uh, I believe, um, if you do not speak, if you're not pretty fluent in Spanish, then you're going to have a hard time with the population. And, um, you know, that's just another another heap and valley, another hill and valley I do not want to have to climb on my first uh, contract. So uh, I declined. And that being said, I realize um, I think it's a miscommunication with my recruiter. Um, you know, I, I won't say the name of this company, but the issue is, you know, I, I don't think I should be even submitting to facilities that I do not know fully and have not researched. OK, um, if I'm on the phone with a recruiter and they ask me, you know, if I'm interested in a facility in quick, 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 and they want to submit me. I, I felt rushed, and I'll admit it now. Um, looking back, I should have said, okay, hold on, let me look it up. Let me figure out how many, you know, I think I looked up the beds and saw it was only about mm, 30 more beds than I I wanted to see. Maybe like had 360, 370 beds. So I was willing to bend on that slightly. But all the other factors, you know, I felt like she really could have gone over with me. You know, do you, how's your Spanish? Um, the area is a, a little, you know, like I said, expensive to live in. She could have warned me about that. Um, also, uh, really for the money they're offering in the area, really didn't add up. So I felt like, although I told her to submit me to this facility, I really had I had time to really research the facility, I wouldn't have submitted to it. Uh, I kind of got rushed into that. So that's my bad. And it's a lesson that I had to learn and I learned it now. So maybe you can learn it from me before you make that mistake. Uh, before you agree to submit to a facility, make sure you've looked it up. Does it have, do you want to go to a big magnet 800 bed facility? Are you looking for a little, a little small mom and pop hospital? Um, you know, look up the area, the housing. Is it safe? Are you going to, you know, an inner city? Are you going to a, a rural area? What do you want to go to? You want to go to either of those, you know, all that needs to be considered before you accept, um, uh, to, before you decide to submit to 
uh, facility and I learned that the hard way. So I will, I actually feel kind of bad. I feel like I wasted their time. You know, they sent me an automated uh, interview as I talked about and um, they went through all that when really I didn't even want to work at that facility. Uh, I was just using it as like an interview experience and that's wrong. Um, someone took time to hook that up and, and the recruiter also takes time to look into things. So that is something I won't do again. I will not submit to a facility unless I know I will be accepting if they call me back. So I kind of feel like I wasted an offer. Um, it is what it is. And I'm sure my the recruiter is a little and with me. But you know what? Another reason, as I said, is a kicker. They never sent me, as I said, anything in writing, right? They never actually emailed me an actual pay package or a breakdown or hourly rate. This was all just said over the phone. Um, and that is a huge, huge, huge red flag. So I wouldn't have really accepted that offer with them anyway. And now I'm just kind of, um, I, I asked them what the bill rate was. She said, okay, if you don't like the amount of money they're offering, we can counter. What would you like? So I countered the 800 more that I, that I uh, had seen. And, you know, let's see what she says. But really, they, um, I, I, they, they really, uh, they never sent me anything in paper. And that's a big red flag. They should have really sent me some kind of breakdown of, of the pay and exactly what my hourly rate would be before and after taxes and the stipends. You know, she never separated that from me at all. Um, so I got to admit, mm, not that, not that impressed uh, in, in that regards. Uh, other than that, she's been cordial. She's been efficient. She's always answered back. Um, she's been very nice. But every other company has sent me a pay package. Uh, email f that I can see and, and calculate and go back to. It's not just over the phone. Oh, that's 2500 a week. Oh, that's you know thirty three hundred a week. Oh, that's forty five hundred a week. Well, what is that? What what is it? Is that what's the what's the housing? What's the meal? What's the hourly rate? And and I'm playing dumb with them. I don't know if they're playing me for a fool, um, you know, because I'm I'm like, well, let's see how far we will take this. Let's see how stupid you think I am, you know. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted uh, with them. Uh, I asked the bill rate uh, when she. <laughs> Which is not a rookie question. Um, I'm, I'm a rookie at this, but I've been watching a lot of YouTubers. Thank you, all you experienced travel nurses who are making making videos. And I asked what the bill rate was uh, when she wanted to know my counter. And I could tell it was a question like, ooh, what's she doing asking the bill rate? You know, that's not going to tell me the bill rate. Wouldn't tell me the bill rate. Uh, gave me a different kind of breakdown. Uh, then asked if I was still interested or if she wanted me to pull uh, my profile. <laughs> so I think she caught my vibe. But um. But yeah, I'm so interested. I, I did apply to a few other facilities with them that I'm waiting to hear back from. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I did find another recruiter who had facilities open in the area that I really wanted to go to. So I did apply to a few more with her. So fingers crossed, I will have a video soon uploaded saying that I got an offer from somewhere that I really want to go to. And now let's quickly talk about cancellations. I'm seeing a lot of people getting canceled before they even before they even start their assignment. They move across country after they've secured housing. They pass their competencies exams. They've gone through it all. They get there and guess what? You're canceled. I think this is wrong. I think it's abusive. I think it's wrong. Um, I know everyone says, this is travel nursing. You have to have money saved up. This is part of the high risk. This is part of the job. It's part of the risk. You got to write it. No, listen. No, no, no. We upheld our part of the deal, right? If someone in HR didn't run a census report for the last month to determine whether or not there was still a need for a traveler, that, that's not on me. I did my part. I came here. I got all the way here. So I have a problem with this. And I think that more of us need to be asking for cancellation clauses in our contracts, right? What is this? Well, I'm still learning and I'm learning from other people who have tried this. I've heard that someone had a, a clause put into their contract saying they at maximum could only be canceled for three shifts out of their 13 week contract, right? Uh, I guess there's, you, you know, you have your guaranteed pay as well, but hospitals can also cancel you uh, for shifts. So please note that you, you need to try to protect yourself for that. And uh, another person said, you know, 
I heard of putting a two-week cancellation clause into your contract, just as if you would have to give two-week notice for leaving a job. If they are planning on canceling you, they have to give you the decency of two weeks notice. So that way, it at least gives you and your recruiter a little bit of time for you to uh, find another position. And especially if you found your own housing, right? And say you signed a three-month lease somewhere, now you're stuck. You got canceled. What are you going to do? So at least the two weeks would give you some kind of time to try to find another assignment within your vicinity uh, so you wouldn't get screwed over too hard. But listen, you know, I know a lot of you have been doing this for a while and think it's part of the game. It's part of the game. So what you do. No, no. Listen, we are professionals. We are demanding professionalism, right? They demand professionalism from us and, and likewise. So please have somebody in your HR take 20 minutes to run a freaking census report and make sure that there's still a need for a travel nurse before they get up and uproot their lives and possibly their entire families, right? Some of you have children, okay? And go across country only to find out you're canceled and now you're scrambling to find something else. It's not okay. That is not okay. We are all professionals here. And it's time we start holding these agencies and these facilities responsible and accountable, right? We would give two week notice before we left. That's the right thing to do. And I think it's time that we start demanding the same. All right. Listen, nurses, the world is yours. It's time we start standing up for ourselves. This is our time. This is our revolution. Cheers and have a great